from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of the Mass today is made possible by a contribution from Rose Calum from Comox, British Columbia. And the Mass is, honored, is offered in honour of her 95th birthday, which she actually celebrated on August the 9th. And so our sincere thanks to you and a belated happy birthday on 95 years. May God continue to bless you. And we gather this day, we acknowledge that we, hear, we are gathered in the presence of our God and we ask God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. As we are this day in the presence of our God who has gifted us so much, I'm sure it gifted Rose so much during her lifetime, and to all of us, we take a moment to acknowledge our lack of gratitude and ask forgiveness of God and of each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who filled the priest and martyr, St. Maximilian Kolbe, with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary and with zeal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant through his intercession that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others, we may be conformed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt with what I did in its midst. And afterwards, I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and made the sea come upon them and cover them. And your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. Afterwards, you lived in the wilderness a long time. Then I brought you out of the land of the Amorites who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you and I handed them over to you and you took possession of their land and I destroyed them before you. Then King Balak, son of Zippor of Moab, set out to fight against Israel. He sent and invited Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore he blessed you, so I rescued you out of his hand. When you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you and also the Amorites 
the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I handed them over to you. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove out before the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored and towns that you had not built, and you live in them. You eat the fruit of the vineyards and the olive yards that you did not plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. And some Pharisees came to Jesus, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause? And Jesus answered, Have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And so they're no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. And they said to him, why then did Moses command us to give a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her? And Jesus said to them, it was because you were so hard-hearted that Moses allowed you to divorce your wives but from the beginning it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for unchastity and marries another 
commits adultery. And his disciples said to him, if such is the case of a man with his wife, it's better not to marry. But Jesus said to them, not everyone can accept this teaching, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by others, and there are eunuchs who have been made, them, made themselves eunuchs for the sake of the kingdom of God. And this is the gospel of the Lord. I have to tell you that the gospel text makes me remind, reminds me of my, that I, of my days when I was a seminarian and Cardinal Ambrosic was our scripture professor. And we were told that the then Father Ambrosic was going to do a, a doctorate in sacred scripture. And at the end of the semester, he was going to leave. And so we asked him, what do you hope or what do you expect to focus your research on? And he said, I'd like to study the texts on divorce found in the Sermon on the Mount and enter the debate about whether they're Christian ideals or law. In the gospel, Jesus is dealing with another burning question concerning divorce about which there was no unanimity among the Jewish people. The Pharisees were deliberately trying to involve Jesus in that controversy. At that time, a woman had no legal rights and the right to divorce lay entirely with the husband. Under rabbinic law, divorce was even compulsory for two reasons, a woman who committed adultery and a woman who was sterile. The Mosaic law stated that a man may divorce his wife, and I quote, if she, if she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her. The rabbis were quite polarized about the interpretation of indecency. And the scripture scholar Barclay tells us that for the school of Shammai, indecency meant fornication and only fornication. On the other hand, the school of Hillel interpreted the matter of indecency in the widest possible way. That is, if she spoiled the dinner, she went out without her hair bound, or if she talked to a man on the street. They were grounds for divorce, according to that tradition. And so, in effect, the Pharisees were trying to involve Jesus in this controversy by asking him whether he favored the Shemel, the Shemai interpretation or that of the Hillel group. And in his response, Jesus went back to the beginning to essentially, what is the ideal? In October, the Synod of Bishops is going to deal also with a consideration of family life, and there will be many controversial questions raised in the first session, which we followed up at the first session, which was held last October. One is about Catholics who are divorced and remarried, about the possibility of receiving communion, while some of the other questions had to deal with homosexuality and what our attitude should be. There are many different points of view and many of them have been expressed. You've heard them on TV and you've read them in the paper. The preparatory document for the Synod reminds us, and I quote, all families should, above all, be treated with respect and love and accompanied on their journey as Christ accompanied the disciples on the road to Emmaus. And Pope Francis's words that the church will have to initiate everyone, priests, religious, and laity, into the art of accompaniment, which teaches us to remove our sandals before the sacred ground of the other. The pace of this accompaniment must be steady and reassuring, reflecting a closeness and a compassion, which at the same time heals, liberates, and encourages growth in the Christian life. In preparation for the Synod of the, on the Family last October, the Japanese bishops recommended that the church follow the approach of Jesus in his conversation with the woman at the well. They wrote, in developing a pastoral orientation, it's important to recall that the only time in the Gospels that Jesus clearly encounters someone in a situation of cohabitation outside of marriage, he doesn't focus on it. Instead, he respectfully deals with the woman and turns her into a missionary. 
The conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well is one of the longest and most spirit-filled conversations that we find in all of the Gospels. And it begins with the shared and elemental human experiences of weariness, of hunger and thirst, not with a theological discussion with other Jews and male Jews at that, but with a woman belonging to the Samaritans with whom the Jews, the Orthodox Jewish believers had relationships of enmity, national, religious, and political. But throughout his ministry, Jesus habitually crossed cultural and religious boundaries and barriers. And this encounter in Samaria is no exception. By engaging in conversation with the Samaritan woman, he's already pushed back the boundaries of gender, religion, and ethnicity. And step by step, Jesus and the woman reveal themselves to each other. They talk about their deepest thirst, their deepest hunger, but the focus of the dialogue is not on her marital history, nor is she said to be a sinner. The woman's understanding of Jesus progresses to the point where she recognizes him as a prophet and eventually as Messiah. The two started by focusing on common thirst that spring from their shared humanity. And they had to let go, let go of the ingrained stereotypes of the other and start of, stop avoiding each other and listen intently to the other to discover who the other really is. We pray that the Spirit of God will open and guide all of us for the upcoming synod to recognize the sacred ground of all women and men who are the subjects of those deliberations. Please join with me as we pray. We pray this day in a very special way for the many people who join us via television, for the many intentions that they've asked that we remember in our prayer. So for all of them and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray that you open our minds and our hearts to always receive the Spirit, the Spirit of God, that the Spirit of God will lead us and guide us in all that we do. And for that grace for each of us, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the victims of that terrible explosion in China. We pray for the victims of earthquakes and those who suffer persecution. For all who are persecuted and suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord in all of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And we present our oblations to you, O Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of St. Maximilian to offer our very lives to you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through Jesus with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. And therefore we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, giving it to his disciples, said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. Peace, my dear.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and the soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of Father Carlo Maria Martini. Lord Jesus, we ask you now to help us remain with you always, to be close to you with all the ardor of our hearts, to take up joyfully the mission you entrust to us, and that is to continue your presence and to spread the good news of your resurrection. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that St. Maximilian received from this holy banquet. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen. Have a good day. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick. And your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass. Imagine a CD with 25 of your favorite hymns from the past six missions. These 25 hymns will take you out of yourself and for a time at least put you in the presence of God. And he will bring